Hey, this is Maya Basics 5, Secondary Action. All right, so last session with our ball bounce, we covered the animation principles of timing. We covered slow in and slow out, or ease in or ease out. Stretch and squash, which helps to give us the illusion of weight, and path of action. In this session, we'll cover how to animate secondary action, and we'll take a look at the wave principle first. And we'll do it with a rigid object and with a soft object. We'll also cover the animation principle or anticipation, and we'll learn why and how to overshoot and settle. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is, is practice the wave principle. So we're gonna aim for something like this. So when we're animating a wave principle, we have to remember that the base of whatever object is waving, whether it be a scarf or a tail or a floppy ear, the base of it is where the energy is, is coming from. It's what's driving the rest of the, of the object. So you can see it wagging at the bottom, at the base here. And the tip of the leaf is just uh, coming along for the ride, but it's, it's dragging. It drags and then whips at both ends. So we'll just go through it slowly. So we started off at frame one here, and then the whole thing just drags, the tip of the leaf drags, as the, the base is creating the energy. It's driving the whole thing. And then as the base starts to pull back the other way, we have some drag on the tip, and then it whips and then the whole thing just drags again until we get to the other side and then it does the same thing. The important thing to note here is that the base of the object, this is where the muscle would be driving the rest of the of the extremity. So you can see that the, the base starts to actually come back in the opposite direction first and then the rest of it drags and we get this whipping action and then it, it, it drags for the rest of the, of the action. Alright, so let's take a look at the poses that uh, we would have for the wave principle. All right, so we're gonna try something new here. We're gonna go with a grease pencil. So pose one would look something like this. So this could be any number of, of frames. You can do these far. You can do them far apart at certain places and closer together, which would, which would vary your speed. Posing your drawings farther apart would be a faster motion, and then closer together would be a slower motion. This wag can be slower at the top, but the drawings placed closer together, and then the whip can be really quick on both sides. So. I'll let you guys decide how you want to animate that. So drawing one, drawing two. Again, we got to remember the base here is what's driving the all the energy. Drawing three. This is the important part of the wag. The base would start to actually come back. It would start to come back the other way. So it's going to start coming, going back to the right in the opposite direction but the tip does not follow right away. It drags behind a little bit. The base continues to, to go in the opposite direction and then we get this whipping action or overlapping action. So the drawings actually overlap and you can see here where they're overlapping. And then it continues to go back in the opposite direction. This is the important part of the of the wave principle where the base actually starts to head back in the other direction. But the tip doesn't isn't ready to go there yet. But then it finally succumbs to the force. And then we are on our way back to the first pose that we did again. So if we play that. All right, so let's try this in 3D. So set your layout, your perspective and camera view at the top. It can be on either side. And then at the bottom, we have our graph editor. Let's just bring the graph editor down all the way because we're just going to block out some animation right now. All right, so we just want to get the leaf off this character. This is our uh, fork and ripe avocado character. Um, he's got a, a, a leaf on the back of him. This is going to be for some, some soft secondary action. And then this fork that's sticking out of his head is going to be for some uh, rigid secondary action. We'll just take a quick look at this rig. You can see that this fork is just stuck in his head. If you select this uh, control curve around the fork, you can get any kind of rotations. It translates as well. At the top of his head here, you have this, this control, which is just the stem. And then there's a leaf here. You can uh, shift select all of these controls for the leaf. And if you hit your rotation tool, all the controls will uh, bend together. Or you can select each one individually. 
when you're posing the leaf for the wave principle or any kind of secondary action, there will be situations where you want to pose it like this, something like that. So you'll need to select them individually and, and just pose it out. Okay, so down at the bottom here we have his main control. This takes his whole body and you can translate and rotate that. And the pivot's right at the bottom. Also too, you'll notice in the channel box there's this squash control that we've added and that just squashes the entire character. If you select the squash channel, go into your view panel and middle mouse button drag, you'll see the result. That's as far as he squashes and that's as much as he stretches. Alright, so right now we're just going to grab his leaf and we're just going to work with his leaf right now. So you can just take that right off. Later on when we're done with it, you can go to the channel box, select all these text fields, not the scale, but just all the rotate and translate the values, press zero, or you can just set each one to zero, back to zero, and it'll put it right back on, on our character. So for now, let's just move him out of the way. We'll just move him right out of the out of uh, camera view. But we're going to grab his leaf. Let's bring his leaf into camera view, and we'll bring it toward the camera, and just center it, and rotate it so we get it in profile here. And just place it something like this. Make sure the entire leaf is in frame so we can see it and not too close. Just something like that. Just frame it something like that so we can see. All right, so what we're going to do is create a shelf button. In the last class, we looked at how to make a new shelf. I like to have just a shelf called ACP, Animation Career Pro. You can do that if you like. And just put all the uh, the things that, we, that we're that we going to do in, a, in the program on that one shelf. So here you can see here I have a ball, leaf, arm, all kinds of other stuff that we we're going to do in the future. Right now I'm going to use this leaf one. You guys, just like we did last class, to make a shelf button, remember you go to Edit, Clear All, in your script editor. Go to Edit, Clear All, and then you can just shift select these controls one at a time. And then drag over the text, and then middle mouse button, drag it to your shelf. It'll create the button, and then you go to Shelf Editor to give it a name. And I just named mine Leaf. So here's my Leaf button. So I'm just going to go to Frame 1, click my Leaf button to select all the controls and press S on the keyboard. And you can see in the timeline that set a key. All right, so let's go to our next pose. So let's just pose these out. I'm gonna pose them out uh, evenly spaced. So I'll just go five frames maybe. Since we're on one, five frames down the timeline is gonna be at frame six. All right, so I'll set my first pose. Remember the base of this object is what's gonna be driving it. So I'm gonna grab the bottom control and just move it over a little bit. And then I'll have the top dragging a little bit. So I'll grab the top three controls and just maybe give it a little bit of a bend. And then I'll hit my leaf button at the top, select everything, and press S on the keyboard. Remember, we're, we're keying all the controls for this, for this object on one frame, and that's one pose. So on frame one and frame six, we have our first two poses. And remember, you can use your greater than, less than keys on the keyboard, right in between the M and the, the question mark. And you can step from one pose to the next. All right, so let's go five more frames down the timeline and we'll set our next pose. And I'll just have that drag a little more. I think that's good for our third pose. Let's select our leaf button. Select all the controls and we'll press S on the keyboard. All right, so now if I tap through one, two, three, we have three poses. So we're gonna go five more frames down the timeline and this pose is where, it's where the base of our object is gonna start to pull back and we're gonna get some overlapping action here. Okay, so we'll actually grab the base, pull it back. Now we're going to have to do some posing here. So you want to get it so that the base of the object is starting to pull back in the opposite direction. And the top is okay, but we can add some drag, some more drag to this leaf, because the top of it, the top of it isn't ready to go back yet. The bottom's, the bottom's saying, we're going back this way now, and the top's just saying, it doesn't, has no idea that, that, it, that it wants to do that yet. So it's still going in that direction. All right, so let's hit our leaf button, select everything, and we'll hit the S on the keyboard. All right, so now we have this going on. Not much overlap going on, maybe a little bit at the bottom, but the next pose is where the overlapping action really takes place. So I'm gonna go five more frames down the timeline, and the first thing we're gonna do is take care of the bottom first, because that's the driving force. So that's coming back up, and the rest of it now can can whip back. So 
So we're just going to pose it something like that. Let's select everything. Hit our button. That's on the keyboard. Now let's take a look at what we've done. Let's go, let's go to the last pose. So now this is where the poses actually overlap each other. If you uh, step back and forth from keyframe to keyframe, just the last two we did, you'll see that you should have this overlapping action. If you place these two drawings over top of one another, they're overlapping. All right, so let's just go through to frame one and scrub through, see what we've done so far. So this is just blocking. We're just roughing this in. It's going to look kind of rough at first. Let's go five more frames down the timeline. And we'll set our next pose. Select the base of the, the leaf and bring it back up. This is probably fine. Let's just do this for now. We'll go to the next pose. One, two, three, four, five more frames down the timeline. And we'll just bring it right back up to its original uh, position, but bent the opposite way, of course. So now it's back up at the top. We want to get this action going, but on the other side. So let's go five more frames down the timeline. And we'll bring it. We're just going to select the base for now. Get that going. And we can give that a little bit of a drag. Let's just select all the top three controls and bend it a little bit. Select our leaf control, and this is our next pose. And this will be the third pose. So let's select that base and bring it right down. And you can grab, let's grab the fourth control and just give it a little bit, a little bit more drag. You can give it a bit, bit more drag on the tip as well. All right, so that's good. Let's select our leaf button and S on the keyboard to key it. So now we have one, two, three, and our next pose is going to start to the base is going to start to pull back the other way. And we have to get back to this position for a full cycle. So so far we have this whip, and then on its way back. And now we're going to do the whip. So it's going to be basically these two poses, but on the other side. So it's going to be this pose. So you can see we have like an S shape here. And then the next pose it goes into the extreme C curve again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let's... So this is pulling back in the opposite direction and the top of the leaf hasn't realized it yet. Let's just key that. I want to step back and forth and see how that looks. That's okay for now. We're just blocking. I'm going to go five more frames down the timeline. Okay, that's fine for now. All right, so let's hit our leaf button. S on the keyboard. So these two drawings should overlap each other. So the next one should be, you see how this drawing is more kind of an S shape? And the next one should really, it should go up and then through the tip of this one. So, so let's just step back and forth. Yeah, pretty much does that. We're just going to fix that a little bit. Something like that. So I'm just going to look at the same drawing we have on the other side. So, and how many we took to get back to the top? One, two. So there's two more. So we'll go to need two more poses and we have a, we'll have a complete cycle. So one, two, three, four, five down the timeline. Grab the base, bring it up. You can give it a little bit of uh, drag. Next, and then we'll go to our last. Our last pose can actually be copied from frame one. Let's just go to frame one, select our leaf button, select all the controls, right click over frame one and go to copy. And then let's go to five more frames down the timeline on the end here. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll go paste. There we go. All right, so let's place our, mar our time marker on frame 60. Because after we see frame 60, it's going to jump right back to frame one. So we don't want to play our last key pose because it's copied from frame one, because then we'll see frame one twice. So we'll go to frame 60, uh, go into our range slider, the end of our range slider text field here, and just go, we know we want it to stop at frame 60. so. Let's type in 60, enter. So after it hits the end here, it's going to right, pop right back to frame one. So let's just play that and see how it looks. Okay, so that's blocked. All the tangents are flat. That's why it's sort of um, chugging a little bit. So if we go into our graph editor, we'll just bring our graph editor back up now because we're going to start refining. 
first thing you have to think about before you actually start refining is are you happy with the timing because that's the whole point of blocking out your animation you're blocking out your timing and posing so are we happy with all the poses are we happy with the, the, how fast it's going and how slow it's going in, in certain areas but let's why don't we just spline all the curves and then we'll work on the timing a little bit so we could just do that we can select all the keys in here if you select your hit your leaf button first make sure you have all the controls selected and then we can drag over and select all the keys in the graph editor and hit the spline button right here or we can just go on the timeline and just select all the controls shift click and drag to select all the keys here in the timeline and then you can right click go to tangents and spline and you can you'll see them all go to spline in the graph editor as well so let's actually just take a look at that before we go into refining it more so you can see it's a little smoother but actually that's really slow all right so let's adjust our timing a little bit as you know we have all the keys spaced five frames apart so let's just change that up a little bit I think it'd be better to have it get a little faster on the way down and whip a little faster so it'll be all the motion at the top here this whole area at the top can be slower and then this whip will be faster so let's just start our frame on and focus on each uh, each pose one pose at a time so this because the whole thing's pretty slow already we'll just keep the same speed in this area and then it can start to speed up here so let's just select our third key pose and drag over all the keys to the right and we'll just move it in a little bit so they're closer together so by these frames being these two poses being closer together that's going to speed up right so we went one two three there's three in betweens there now so the next one let's do let's go with two we will go two and two let's grab all those frames after it two and then another two frames for the whip And then on the way up, that can be slower. So let's just let's let's bring it in maybe one frame. It's a thick of gravity too as things start to rise. Gravity's taking effect, so it's gonna be a little slower as it struggles to, to come up. And this whole area can be the same speed. Alright, so we can bring this in. I think we did it uh, three frames on the on the other side. And this is two frames, two frames and two frames. So for the whip, it's two frames each. Whoops. So we're not selecting any individual controls. We have all the controls selected. So we're moving the entire pose. We don't want to select any individual controls. Like say you select this control here or this one. And then if you start moving keys that way, it's going to it's going to bungle everything up so just make sure you select your leaf button and you have all the controls selected before you start sliding these keys around so that's quick and then on the way up we brought it in one frame and then this is the same speed okay so that should be a little different okay well that's fine for now you guys can uh, mess around with your posing but you can see here there's a pattern five frames apart here um, and over here it's the same it's like a mirror copy this is the middle It'll be the same over here as it is for over here. You can see the one I did in previous is a little different. It's a little more even. So if you keep refining it, you can get something a little nicer like that. So at this point I would go into the graph editor. This is pretty this is all blocked now. You know, like I said, you can refine the timing a little further. But now you can go into your graph editor and say you want to do something like this. It'd be nice to get a little bit more whip out of the tip. So that's our if we look at our rotation tool, that's happening on the rotate X. So you go directly to the rotate X in the graph editor and just look at that curve. Look in your camera view and see what's happening at, and at what time. So you have to think about what you want. So at this point, say you want the tip to be curled a little more still, just place your time marker right in the middle there, right at the place where you want the, the, the change to happen. And then just start bending the curves on either side of it and see what happens. So you can see that's giving us what we want, right? It's bending the tip a little more. They're going down over here, which is what you want, but they're popping up on the other side, which might not be desirable. Or might, usually it is, but it's causing the leaf to bend in the other direction on the other side. So that's fine, but really it doesn't give us totally what we want here in between these two keyframes. So usually what I do is give it a bend, grab the keyframe and bring it down a little bit. Give it a little bit more of a bend, grab the keyframe, bring it down. And we can do the same thing with this other key, on, um, this other keyframe on the other side. 
just to have a nice looking curve here. So that gives us a little more drag on the tip of the leaf. And it gives us a little bit more whip on the other side too. In this area it goes up and in this area the leaf uh, bends down. You can do the same thing for each one of these controls. If I select the, the, the next control down, let me go in our graph editor. I can select the rotate X for one control. If you hold control down, you can also select the rotate X for the other control. And then you can see them both, which is nice. So I'm just going to deselect that. You can hold control down and select and deselect any other channels. So I'm just going to deselect that. We just want to have our two rotate X controls there. That's all we want to see right now. So you can see this is the one that I have highlighted here. That's the one we just revised. Then we can do the same for the other one. I always like to put the time marker right at the spot that we're changing so I can see the effect in the, the camera view. Now you kind of know what we need to do to the next one because we did it to the last one. So that's a little much, that's a little crazy, but you guys can refine that yourselves. All right, so if you need to make a play blast of this, just go to Window, Outliner, and select the camera. Go to your, your camera panel and spacebar to go full screen. Set your range slider so that it cycles properly. Check it, make sure. And then we're gonna go to our timeline, right click, option box, play blast option box. And just make sure your settings are like this, where it's QuickTime, H264, and your uh, quality is scaled up all the way and scales all the way up. And make sure you have the save to file box checked and then browse to where you want to save it in your on your computer. Give it a name and then hit play blast. And then if you want, you can save the file out. You can do a save as and save it off as a, as a different Maya file. And we're going to start animating our avocado. I'm just going to select the leaf button. We'll select all the controls and I'm just going to right click and delete those. And then you can go to your channel box with all the controls selected. Go to your channel box, drag over all the translate and rotate values, press zero on your keyboard, or you can just enter zero on each one individually. All right, so now we have the leaf right back on the avocado. So let's grab his, his body control and we'll bring him back into frame. You can do it here and you can also do it in the camera view. All right, so let's just bring him right to the left side of frame. We're going to start animating this guy. And this is what we're going for for this, for this exercise. Okay, he's going to bounce across screen and we're going to do some secondary action on his, on his leaf, which is going to be some soft secondary action on a soft object. And then we're also going to do some secondary action on the fork that's sticking out of his forehead. And we're going to anticipate him and he's going to bounce along, very similar to the bouncing ball exercise. We're going to anticipate and then there's going to be some stretch and squash and he's going to follow a path of action and then he'll settle at the end and this is what we should come up with. Something like this. Okay, so we'll break it down for you. So he anticipates here. So here he's building up the energy before he, uh, before he goes into his, his bounce, his first bounce. Anticipation usually moves in the opposite direction of the main action. So if he's gonna go up, he's going up. So first he's gonna go uh, down and back a little bit or at least down. So it goes in the opposite direction first, that's what an anticipation is. And really what we're doing is we're, we're building up energy in, in the object or the character. We're building up energy before it, it gets released. It conveys to an audience that something's about to happen and they almost know what it, what it is because it's moving in the opposite direction. Then when it happens, it, it just feels right. So we're gonna anticipate and we're gonna do basically what we did with the bouncing ball. But we're gonna swing his bottom end over because it's heavier. And then the whole time he's doing this, uh, we're going to block this action in first, and then we're going to do the secondary action later. And then he's just going to settle at the end. Let's start blocking this in. All right, I'm just going to bring my graph editor down, so I don't want to see that right now. Have your outliner handy. Open up your outliner, and you can just minimize it to the bottom of the screen. All right, so I'm just looking at this framing here. The camera's a little bit close. In our example here, we haven't bounced. One, two, he bounces twice. So we're going to just uh, back it up a little bit and give ourselves a little more space. So go to your outliner, uh, unfold your camera, and you can see the position. Select the position. You can focus in on that with F on the keyboard. And we'll just take a look at our whole stage. Uh, we want to be moving the camera here and looking in the camera view. So we're just going to back that up in the Translate Z a little bit. And then move it over in X. Just get him so he's on the right side of frame. Don't start him off frame, just have him somewhere around there. It's good. 
and we don't want too much floor showing and we want to give them room to hop here so at the top so we're going to move the camera up a little bit something like that should be fine you can key that camera on frame one just in case you move it by accident all right so let's start blocking in our rough animation here i'm just going to select this body control on the perspective view and focus in on that all right so we're not going to animate the fork or the leaf first we're just going to do his body let's give ourselves a 10 frame hold just for presentation so i've already created my button for this guy and i just called it fia fork and avocado and that selects everything it selects all the controls for this for his entire body so i'm going to give him a key on frame one all right we have a key on frame one so let's go to frame 10 and we'll just set another key just so it holds for for 10 frames it's just a presentation thing we don't want animation to begin right at frame one because when you go to watch it it's you have no time to think about what's, what's about to happen or anticipate anything so give it a 10 frame hold and then we'll just go we're going to give him a bit of an a bit of anticipation so we'll set our first pose and it's going to be an anticipation pose that's our first key pose so let's say let's give it maybe six frames down the timeline you know we have our, our x y and z rotation controls here but in the camera panel you can use this this is like a world rotation control and it just it'll rotate them if you use it it's on the outside of your of your other rotation uh, uh, controls but if you use that it's gonna affect the X and Y coordinates all right so let's give them a little bit of a squash and go to our squash control here and just use the virtual slider it's middle mouse button drag so we just rotated them a bit and squashed them down a bit and I'm gonna hit his button select all of his controls and press S on the keyboard so that's what we have so far we have a 10 frame hold and then he squashes rotates and squashes a bit so he's anticipating his jump so now let's go into his jump. So it's the same as the ball bounce. Remember we had that extreme stretched pose? We're going to do the same thing with this guy. And it's going to happen fast. He's going to launch into the air quickly. So let's just give it about two frames. Get his body control selected. So that's good for our launch pose. And we're going to select his, his button and press S on the keyboard. All right, so now we want to get him to the top of his arc. Remember at the top of the arc, things move a little slower. So we're going to space the, uh, his poses. We're going to space his key poses farther apart but we're gonna place some his poses closer together in the panel here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, let's say four. Let's go about four frames for now. We're just blocking, so this can be rough. The other handy thing to, to do is, right now I wanna move him up and over to the, to the left a little bit. Now I can do this with his controls here as they are, but if you go to the channel box, and I know I wanna move him over in X and up in Y. So if I go to translate X and you select that control, you'll see the, the manipulator changed gives us the, the the world orientation. So we can grab X now and just move it over in X and up in Y. And I'm actually just gonna key that and just scrub over and check it. And that's fine. So now I'm gonna rotate him a little. So I just wanna give him a little bit of translation and rotation. And we put four frames apart here. And then we'll do another four frames. So I'm just gonna select that translate X in the channel box and move him over and down a little. And now we'll rotate them a little bit this way. And I'm just going to move them over a little bit more. So we have this action going on. And then the drop will be pretty fast. So let's get them right down to the ground again. Just think of our think of the ball bounce that we did. On these top poses, we want to reduce the squash a little bit. So you can actually just put them back to zero. Go to the squash and just set it to zero for both those poses. And then when he's going toward the ground again, we can we can squash him out. When he stretches out, you want to aim him in the direction that he's that he's headed. So we can actually rotate him a little bit more here. You want to point them point him in the direction where he's going to go. And then on the way back, you want to point him in the direction that he where he came from. So what the top end should be where he came from, the bottom end should go should point to where he's going. So we could actually rotate him a little bit more here. So it's something like that. And then the next one is, we'll just go, go two more frames down the timeline, so a real quick squash. Grab his body pose, the translate X in the timeline, and now we can bring him down to touch the ground. So he's just barely touching it there. And then we'll, let's rotate him. We can maybe have him lean forward a little bit, just to give the impression of momentum. And we'll squash him right down. Now let's select his whole body and we'll key that. So let's just play it and see how that looks. All right, so that's looking okay. So at this point, remember with our ball bounce, we, we did a moving hold 
on the on the impact. So we're going to do that here as well. We could give it. Uh, let's give it two frames here. So we'll just set another key. Maybe squash them down a little bit more. So instead of a static hold, we're going to have like a a little bit of a moving hold and just have them squash a little bit more. That'll just give them a real springy feel. All right. So we'll have them squash a bit and let's actually rotate them a little bit as well. So he's squashing and he's also sort of anticipating his next leap. So let's just go two more frames for that. Stretch him out. And then we'll put him into position. And I'm just going to select all of them and key it. And just scrub over that. And you can see his face is starting to turn away from us. Don't really want that. I see how he started. A good thing to do is look between look at the space between his, his uh, far eye and the, the edge of his body. We want to kind of we want to keep that that uh, three quarter view of him in the camera view, so you can see as we are reanimating along, he's, it looks like he's sort of turning. He's not actually turning; it's just that the uh, it's the the lens of the camera is tricking us. So what we'll do later on is we'll just spin him around. We'll take care of it later. So okay, so he's stretching, he's taking off, going launching back up into the air, and then we'll give it same as we did on the last uh, bounce. We'll give it four frames: two, three, four. And we'll take a squash off. That's a good pose. We'll go with that and hit the button S and then another four frames down the timeline. Grab all of them, key it. So we have that butt swinging action going on and then two more frames to get them down. Make sure you aim his top to where he came from and his butt to where he's going. And let's just two more frames on the timeline and we'll bring them right down. And then we'll give him two more frames to squash a little more. Select that body control, squash him a little more. And just to give him the illusion that he has momentum and weight, we'll just rotate him over a little bit more. So he's not able to totally stop himself right away. So we got two hops. So we can just stop him here and let's just have him settle. We're going to have him bounce up a little bit, give him some, some momentum uh, with an overshoot, and then we're going to settle him. So an overshoot is basically just when something's moving quickly, before it comes to a complete stop, it goes past the pose that uh, you're, going to go, you're going to end up in. So that's another way to make the character look like it's heavy and that it has weight, but it's to keep it going in the same direction it was going in and then have it settle. All right, so he's in a squash, and then, bef and then instead of just having him come up to normal, so we go past the pose that he's in now. We go past that. We'll bring him up a little bit, and then have him settle back into his into his rest pose. So to do that, we'll just set another key down the timeline. Like here, we we just uh, zeroed out his, his squash and just straightened him out a little bit. But let's just go down the timeline another five or six frames, and then just key his whole body, and then we'll go back to his his the final pose that we had and select his body control. And we give him a bit of a squash, or sorry, a bit of a stretch. And key that. So now if we drag over it, we have this a bit of a stretch that happens first, and then he settles. I'm just playing it a couple times to check it out. It's a little fast. So we want that, that overshoot to happen fairly quick. It happens in five frames. Four frames, it happens. And then we'll settle him nice and nice and easy. Before we start refining, let's just make an adjustment to keep him in his three-quarter profile. I'm just going to pop right back to frame one and make sure he stays in that, that profile. All right, so select his body control, and we'll go into the graph editor. There's a quick way to do this. So we, what we want to fix is his rotate Y. So we want to we fix this, right? So let's go to, in the graph editor, go to rotate Y on his body control, and let's just hit F to frame it. Grab the last key, might have to scale it down quite a bit. I'm just going to move that key up so that he goes back into the profile that we want him to, with the three-quarter view. Delete all the keys in the middle. So if we scrub over that now, we actually, we actually caused him to turn a little bit, but it's not really noticeable in the camera view. There, and he stays looking in three-quarter. All right. 
Before we start doing any secondary animation, I want to just refine this, this animation a little bit. It's all taking place on the, the body control. So let's go up into our graph editor, and we're just going to refine these bounces a little bit. So first thing I'm going to take a look at is the translate Y. So I want to make sure these bounces are arcing nicely. And you can see here in the graph editor, there, it looks okay, when, our blocking looks okay, but this can be a lot nicer. Same sort of thing as the ball bounce, where we want it to launch very quickly. So we're going to grab this key, and let's break it, the break tangent key uh, button here. And then we can grab one side and bend it straight up. So I'll just scrub over that and see how that looks. Okay, so we, what we also want to do is the same thing with this squash. I'll break it and then have it have it happen right away. All right, I'm going to go back to the translate Y. Okay, so we can have them land a little faster. And then we can just fool around with this uh, translate Y curve just to get him into a nice arcing motion here. We'll take a look at his squash as well. So we can spline these two keys. It's just going to get this whole squashing and stretching action at the top happening a little bit smoother. So just keep refining these curves, scrubbing over your timeline and checking it in the camera panel. So that can be refined a little further, but I'll, for the purpose of this video, I'll just move into the, let's move right on to the secondary action now. So let's do the fork first, do the rigid object first. Since we've selected the entire character for all these poses, we've already got a bunch of keys on the fork. So we really don't need to do much with the fork. When he launches into the air, it's going to lag behind a little bit because it has weight to it and gravity is just going to take it. So we can work with the rotate X here for the most part, and we'll just do that. So we can do this all in the graph editor. We'll take a look at the keys that we already have here. Whichever keys we don't need, we can just delete. So let's just scrub over our animation, really analyze it, take a look at where you want it to change. So I'm thinking right at this point, when he launches off the ground, the fork should start to actually move down a little bit before it starts to realize that it needs to go back up. Gravity's taking effect on it. All right, so we want that to happen a little faster. So we can break that tangent and just move that up a little. So that's gonna cause the fork to move down really quick. So we'll drag down a little bit. And we can bend this a little and that's gonna cause it, this. so this little bump here is gonna cause the fork to move down. And then the other way, um, because it dips down after that, it's gonna cause it to move up. So we have this action. and then it'll settle back up afterwards. So we can exaggerate that a little more. Don't be afraid to push it. Sometimes you could even go way too far and then just tone it down. So let's see how that looks. I think that's okay. And at this point, the fork would be up, would stay up still. So we can keep using these keys that we've already set. Okay, so then on the way down, the fork's probably going to do, it's going to drag again. So in the next pose, he's down here more, but the tip of the fork should probably stay around the area that it's at now. So, and we'll bring it up. Just move it so that it, move it whichever way you have to, to bring it where you need it to be. I think you can even keep dragging here a little. And then at this point, it can probably settle down and give it a bit of an overshoot. And then he's launching back into the air, and it's going to be the same thing we just did. And just move it up or down, whichever way you need to. I'm going to 
keep it pointing down a little bit before it starts to actually it can start to move up there a little more and just keep dragging over and seeing where you need to move the keys in the graph So we'll just play that now. You can get a little more subtle on the fork. So we'll just go down the timeline about six or eight frames, set a key on the fork, and then we can go in between those two key frames and just bend the curve and then scrub over that and see what that does. And it just causes the fork to settle a little bit. It's nice. Just like we did with the squash and then you can keep refining it that way. All right, so let's move on to the leaf. So remember the wave principle that we did. Now the leaf, because he's, you know, he's bouncing up and down, it's not gonna be exactly the same as the wave principle, but pretty close. So we already have all the keys set for the leaf because we keyed the entire avocado's controls as we were doing, having them bounce along. So all we have to really do is just uh, affect the, manipulate the, the keyframes in the graph editor. Or what we could do is we could, we could do the posing on the timeline and that would be fine too. I'll just do the posing on the timeline. We can just have the leaf at this point um, when he goes into his anticipation pose. We can just have the leaf sort of come down. All right, so when he launches up into the up into the air, same thing as the fork, the leaf should probably drag behind. Now because this leaf is a soft object, we're gonna start posing it now, just like we did when we did the wave principle. You could select all the controls here and just straighten it out. And then we can grab the base control and move that down. Just want to get it pointing down away from where it came from. And we can use our leaf button actually to select all those controls and set a key. And you can see in the graph editor that it did that. So let's just scrub over that really quick. And we have this going on. So it's dragging behind. You can almost think of it when you're doing secondary action on a soft object like this. You can always think you can always think of it as the object wanting to go back to where it came from. At this point, it can go back to its default position. So let's just uh, go all, select all the rotate values in the channel box and zero those out. And we'll set a key on that. All right, so let's just rotate it over a little bit so we can see it in profile a little better. All right, so on the way down, this is, as we talked about before, the driving force is the base here. Well, the avocado is the driving force, but the base of the leaf is attached to them. So the base of the leaf is the driving force and the tip is gonna lag behind. So we can grab these controls and get this S shape going. So just pose that out. You'll have to grab individual controls to get the right pose. And then once you've had have this pose the way you like it, use your leaf button, set a key. All right, so we'll scrub over that real quick. Let's take a look at how that looks. All right, so what I wanna do on this one where we have them in the air, we just left everything at zero. I'm just gonna grab the base of the leaf and just move it over in, in Y, just so we get it more in profile like we did with the next pose. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. All right, so for the next one, this is he's on his way down just before impact. So we want to get it to straighten out, just like, he, just like we did over here on the launch. We want it to straighten out just before he impacts. Something like that would be good. We'll hit our leaf button to select everything, or all the leaf controls, and we'll hit S on the keyboard. All right, so the next pose, we have our, we have our, um, our impact pose. All right, so this is the point where we can do our whip. Let's go to this pose and select the, all the leaf controls, and then will mouse button drag over to the next pose on the timeline, and then press S, and it'll copy, and you can see it copied our leaf controls straight over, because the next pose is gonna be similar to this last one, so. On the impact pose, we'll leave it like this. We'll just move the base a little bit. And I'm just gonna give it a, a little bit of drag on the tip of the leaf. And I'll select the leaf button and key that. And then here, it's gonna whip. All 
or sorry, the base of the leaf is already starting to move into the next direction that it's supposed to go in, but the tip of the leaf is dragging behind. So we have our C curve on the leaf, and then an S curve, and then it's going to go into the opposite C curve again. And then what we could do, because he's launching here again, we can go back to our original launch pose, and just let's see if we can copy those leaf controls, just like the entire leaf. Right click and copy, and we'll right click and paste, and it does it. And really, we can just use the same poses. We can reuse the same uh, leaf poses that we that we used on the the first hop. We have all the poses in. We just we can just reuse them, and then modify them if we need to. All right. So now what we can do is select our leaf, just to get all the controls, and we can just set them all to let's set all the leaf controls to spline or all the leaf keys to spline. So just drag over everything, right click, tangents, and spline, or you can. Select all the keys in the graph editor here, and then hit the spline button. It does the same thing. All right, now let's play it and watch it. It should be pretty good. Nice and smooth. It does a weird thing at the end in the settle here. So that pose isn't really working. Yeah, so it's on the way up. You see the leaf should probably drag behind at this point. So we're just going to use the base for that. And then the next pose, we'll just get rid of these. Any curve on this at all. Select the entire leaf to change that pose. Key it. Okay, so what we can do is just rotate this all the way up. And then on the way down the leaf, we can give the, the tip of the leaf a little bit of drag. So we'll just bend the first three, and then we'll bend the last two, and I'll just select the last one, bend that a little bit, just to get a nice progression. And then we can hit our leaf button, press S. And that one should be down a little bit more. There we go. All right, so that looks better. Okay, so now we've covered anticipation and we've done some secondary action with a rigid object and a soft object, and we covered the wave principle as well. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you in basic six.